Hey, volleyball fans, it's our last podcast. Braden Sprennett here with Davis Ransom. And Davis, what what a hectic uh, game and what a way for it to end right there. What go Tell us, give us a recap of that last play here in the University City and uh, Foothill, Foothill Tech uh, volleyball game here in the state playoffs. So two evenly matched teams. They're both going back and forth, uh, winning games, going back the other way. The last play, arguable whether the swing went over the net. The ref said it did. Play continued. The ball looked like it was struck out of bounds. They called it in. Match goes to Foothill Tech. It was kind of a crazy way to end it, but Foothill played some awesome volleyball. They definitely deserved it. And uh, I thought it was really some high-level volleyball and just glad to be a part of this match. So in your opinion, did you think the, the call was a little controversial and probably should have been called? I absolutely think it was controversial. You know, to, to end the season on that, which was, it was clearly borderline. I would have either replayed it or maybe gone the other way with it. But in the heat of the moment, the refs got to make their calls, and and that's the way the games are decided. That's a that's a call for that both of us were talking earlier that's like, you know, some girl's career is going to be ended on that type of call, and it sucks. But the fact of the matter is, is you see – for lack of better words, almost had a meltdown in the last couple points there leading up to it. You want to talk to us a little bit of what happened in uh, the last final moments of that game? Yeah, so they had the lead going into uh, the end of game four. They could have taken it to five. Got a little bit high air, got a little stressed out. Foothill kept the pressure on, made a, a couple of nice blocks, uh, extended the rally, got some second and third swings, and were able to convert a couple of those, and that was enough to sort of get the ball rolling in terms of momentum, and uh, Foothill took it. We were talking a lot about runs while we were watching the game and how important runs are, and, and there was a point in the game where University City went on a big run, and I asked you, do you take a timeout here? And you said, absolutely right now. And, and uh, Foothill's coach did not take a timeout, and it ended up working out for him on a huge you know, incredible run that both of us agreed wouldn't necessarily happen. So what type of role did runs play uh, in this volleyball game? Well, you know, the stress of the state tournament, uh, despite their best efforts, it affects everyone. And when they're playing for stuff that is so close and near to their heart, uh, players have a tendency to change when it gets late in the game. And, you know, if you allow yourself to slip into that mode of sort of being a little tentative, uh, those runs can really start uh, adding up. And I think that's what we saw with Foothill Tech versus UC tonight. So from a coaching perspective, real quick, last last thing we're going to say about this game. Okay, let's, you know, you're coaching for UC and you're starting to see things go downhill. Do you call a timeout or you just go, we got one more point to get we can get this? You know, I think it kind of depends on your team and how you've treated it all year. Ideally, you want to stick with what you've done throughout the whole year, but because momentum is such a big factor in these playoff games, you got to kind of try to dictate the tempo with your timeouts, with your subs and stuff like that. They maybe could have done a little bit more of that and uh, kind of captured some of the momentum back, but it's volleyball, you know, the momentum s swings quickly and you know, it's always exciting to see those things happen. So University City is eliminated for the Division Four state playoffs. They were the one seed um, for Southern California. They, they're not going to uh, move on. Instead, Foothill Tech is going to move on from Ventura. But let's talk a little bit about San Diego and how they've done so far in the state playoff. And, you know, a lot of teams got in that we were not expecting to get in. And when we made our list of what teams would get in, um, I, I can't remember all the teams we thought were going to get in, but I tell you what, it was definitely, we set the bar a little low for what, you know, the committee or whatever, whoever decides put in. And, and what can you say about San Diego Volleyball this year and how, and as a whole, how they did and, and how well they represented us in, uh, in the state? Well, I think they've been representing great. You know, I think... Uh we got teams in every division, and they're all been competitive. You know, Torrey Pine's still going strong. Uh, Point Loma's still going strong. Olympian had a good run. Bishop's had a good run. I mean, Maranatha's still going. And uh, it's uh, it's just been a great year for San Diego Volleyball. I think we're showing the strength of our section, and we're starting to make some runs in these state tournaments, and it's really exciting. Despite teams that have been eliminated so far, but in San Diego... They've at, we've had a team go to the semi, regional semifinals of Southern California for each division, which is, is definitely a, a, a very high accomplishment, to say the least. And we're not settling saying that's it for us because there are some teams still alive. So 
Let's start with the Open. Torrey Pines is currently playing Redondo Union, who knocked off Canyon Crest Academy. That is a team that, you know, they're they're a solid team, and, you know, maybe they're missing their best player against Canyon Crest, but, you know, it should be a win for Torrey Pines. So hopefully we get that, but let's say Torrey Pines wins, okay? And let's just pretend that games that we don't know those teams win, and you look through it, who has the best chance of, of finishing finishing this tournament for 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 any division and, and winning it all for for San Diego? You know, I, I'd say Tory Pines. I mean, the one seed of Northern California is Archbishop Mitty. Uh, Tory's already beat them this year, so that's doable. And. I'm not saying that their route to the finals is going to be easy by any means, but it's stuff that they've done before. It's stuff that they can do again. They're playing some really good volleyball. They're balanced. They're all bought in. You know, I think definitely Torrey's got a good run in them. And then also Point Loma. Point Loma's looking great now. They've sort of calmed down some of, some of their uh, injury issues. They're back healthy. They're playing some really good volleyball. They're playing calm, confident volleyball. Um, and they're looking great to go to the state finals again. So it's, it's interesting you say Torrey Pines because we agree that Torrey Pines is the best team, but they probably have the most daunting schedule uh, coming up here on this home stretch. And the thing that's going for them is, like you said, they beat Archbishop Mitty. Not only did they beat them, they beat them twice this year, which is very it's 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 def, it's difficult to do to beat Archbishop Mitty once, let alone twice. So Torrey Pines is the best team down here, and they have the the most difficult schedule. But the other teams that are still alive. Uh, you know, Division Division One Bishops made it to the the semifinals. They got eliminated by Santa Margarita tonight. Which let's let's talk real quick about you know Bishops going against Santa Margarita. Santa Margarita is just an absolute powerhouse. They they love volleyball out there. They're in a really rich area full of talented volleyball players that that can play year round on the beach. Uh, they're super well coached, super disciplined ball control team, and every year they got a chance to to win the championship. And so I thought that was a really tough draw for them. Division two. Sorry to cut you off there a little quick, but yeah, we're running out of running out of time here. And our right, division two is Olympia. They made it to the regional semifinal. They lost tonight as well. Um, but again, another another team that from San Diego made it to the, to the semifinal. What can you say about what the job um, Olympian has done this year? Man, Olympian not surprised because they've been good for the last couple years, but almost surprised of how consistent they've been this entire year. And they just kind of keep going. They just keep getting better and better. They've had a great run and uh, I'm super proud that the South Bay, you know, has, uh, has come up so strong that the way they have. Division three, we got Point Loma. They're still alive, and, and I believe Poway as well. Um, and their games are going on right now, so we don't know the final score yet. But let's talk a little bit about Point Loma. And we were talking earlier about uh, the Pointers, and they're kind of on a roll now. So what can you say about, about the Pointers? Well, they've so sort of settled down. They found a lineup. They're injury-free. They're playing some of the best ball of the season, playing loose and, and aggressive. And, you know, I think they got a great chance to go all the way. Last year, they went to the state finals. This year, I think they got a bit of a chip on their shoulder in a good way. They want to go back and they want to take it. They really want to give it their best shot. And I think they could do it. I absolutely do. Love to see them play Poway, potentially, with one of, the, with one of those teams it guarantee a spot for San Diego in, in the state final championship. So uh, that's Division Three. Let's go down to Division Four. University City we just covered today lost, but Rancho Bernardo is still alive. They played the ten seed, and they the Rancho Bernardo was the three seed. So you know, hopefully they pull it out. But you know, let's talk a little bit about Rancho Bernardo and, and the job they've done this year. Man, they just keep trucking along. They're one of those teams where they just have that internal belief in themselves. When they encounter those tough matches, they just stay strong and they just kind of keep battling. And that's one of the things I love about watching them play. They just don't stop. They just kind of continue, continue playing their their hearts out. And that's what it takes at this level to be successful. They're a really good job. They did a really good job against San Marcos in, in playing as a team and, and being uh, as good as a unit. Um, so that's my two cents on Ranch Bernardo and, and, and what a job they've done this year as well. So that leaves Division 5 is left. Maranatha Christian has already punched their ticket into the uh, regional final, I guess you could say it, or the, or the, or the state semifinal. Uh, what can you say about Maranatha Christian, a, a team that we haven't really paid too much attention to but has, has been dominating all year? 
Well, Mirnath the Christian has these two twin sisters that are both uh, exciting to watch. Uh, one is a really big flyer outside uh, who can absolutely bring it out there. She can pass attack. She can move the ball around. She can hit over the block. And the other one's a really nice setter who can push it all the way across the court and, you know, make plays for them. But they also have quite a bit of balance. They've sort of just been kind of below the radar but kind of getting better and better as the season goes on and they got they've had a great exciting season and I'm so stoked to see what happens in the in the semifinal and in the state final so hopefully we have multiple San Diego teams represented in the final and the state final and and a one real quick thing again on Tory Pines if we haven't discussed it already but the best team in that pool that they still have to play potentially would be in the final against Archbishop Mitty Torrey Pines has beaten them twice already this year. So I'm liking their chances if they can if they can continue to win and get to that point, they should be in a, a good spot to win a state championship, uh, not only for themselves but for San Diego Volleyball. So it's our last podcast. It's been a great, great fun run. Um, what, what was the most surprising team to you this season and what was the most impressive team for you, uh, for you this season? Well, you know, I hate to talk about Tory Pines again, but they've had so many talented teams over the years. I wasn't expecting them to go this far with the talent that they have. Granted, they have a very talented team, but they've had some teams with, you know, starters at UCLA and, you know, Olympians and whatever. The list goes on and on. Um, but this team seems to be an even tighter team. Uh, they don't give up any cheap points. They have a real uh, strong chemistry going excellent uh, leader in their coach Brendan Dean that was a big surprise to me and then Olympian I think Olympian's been really surprising just how consistent they've been they do not shy away from those those uh, top teams and that's what sort of catapulted them to the top of the county um, I'm really I think it was an awesome year for volleyball in San Diego County I'm so stoked to have been part of this podcast and and seen a bunch of awesome, awesome games so let's talk about that real quick before I give my, uh, you know, most surprising and, and, and best team that I've seen. So give us a recap of what San Diego Volleyball was this year, how, how well San Diego Volleyball did, and, and, and uh, you know, did, Time to boast a little bit about, you know, volleyball down here in San Diego. Oh, yeah. The parity in San Diego has, has changed immensely uh, for a lot of different reasons. A, I think the development of the beach game and kids being able to play, you know, school beach and a club beach and play all around has helped everyone's level come up. But I also think the way the sections set up the playoffs I think is really smart. And I really think that's allowed a lot of teams to come in and be competitive and to play their best volleyball. I'm really really stoked to be part of it and uh you know san diego is a great place to play volleyball it is a great place to play volleyball and, and if we talk about it real quick i'm gonna throw in my most surprising and and uh best team that i've seen um before we we finish here but most surprising team to me was san marcos just for the fact that their record was incredible and then i watched them play and and the way they continued to win and we doubted them the entire year it's like oh well they haven't played anyone they haven't played anyone but you know you got to be able to play, you know, you know, we like the strength of schedule and you got to be able to play people, but you got to be able to win games at the end of the day. And they won games at the end of the day and they proved us wrong day in, day in and day out, week in and week out, week out. So most surprising team for me was San Marcos this year. And then the best team that I've seen all year is, is Torrey Pines 1A and then I'd probably say Canyon Crest 1B. And we were talking earlier about Canyon Crest Volleyball and if it was any other year, they'd be dominating San Diego. Absolutely. And not only, and, and we were saying how much it, it kind of stinks that they're the second best team in their league, the second best team in their division, and it's just, it, it is what it is, but we can't overlook the fact of how great Canyon Crest looked all year and how well they played together um, with their leadership programs and, 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 and all that. So it was fun, Davis. I enjoyed it. Thanks for a great year. Absolutely. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks. We are already getting ready for next year, doing our prep, getting really excited. So for one last time, uh, you're listening to the Volleyball Podcast, Davis Ransom, Braden Suprenant, and we'll see you guys next year.